There are three different parameters that you need to be aware of when it comes to monitoring chlorine. There's free chlorine, combined chlorine, and total chlorine. Swimmers are gonna be contributing pollution when they use the pool. Uh, some of that pollution is gonna be chemical pollution from uh, off their bodies, sweat, urine, etc. And what happens is when that pollution gets into the pool, when that chemical pollution comes off of bathers' bodies, it goes through chemical reactions in the water, breaks down into something called urea, and then breaks down further into a substance called ammonia. You don't want too much of this building up, and you can minimize the amount of ammonia that builds up in your swimming pool by implementing a policy of people taking a shower before using the swimming pool. It can also be controlled by dilution, which is ensuring that there's enough fresh water going into the pool water to dilute out the ammonia as it builds up. So this ammonia is going to be in the swimming pool water to one or extent or another, no matter what you do. Uh, you can't completely uh, prevent ammonia from being in the swimming pool water. And so when you add substances such as calcium hypochlorite or sodium hypochlorite to act as, uh, to introduce some chlorine into the pool, because calcium hypochlorite and sodium hypochlorite are chlorine donors, so they each uh, contain a certain percentage of chlorine. So you add these uh, these products, these substances, to establish a, uh, a residual of chlorine, to establish a certain level of chlorine to uh, react with and kill biological pollution such as bacteria and viruses, etc. And we call this free chlorine. Um, free because it's free, it's available to act as a disinfectant and kill kill germs and it's measured with a dpd1 tablet and happen is that the free chlorine and the ammonia are going to start mixing together because they're, they're both present in the uh, the pool water and uh, what happens as a result is there are byproducts that develop as a result of this reaction between ammonia and free, chlor uh, and free chlorine. And this reaction between ammonia and free chlorine produces something that we refer to as combined chlorine. So ammonia plus free chlorine equals combined chlorine. Now there's a, a key difference between free chlorine and combined chlorine. Um, combined chlorine is essentially a, a byproduct, a waste product. Um, it's not really effective as a disinfectant anymore. And in fact, it's more of a, a pollutant than a disinfectant. Free chlorine is the disinfectant. That's what we want to establish a residual of, um, whilst at the same time making sure that we're controlling the combined chlorine. So we're trying to minimize combined chlorine as much as we can. Combined chlorine will be quite aggressive um, and it will be an irritant. Um, if it's allowed to accumulate to uh, high levels, then bathers will start to experience irritation, uh, eyes, skin, and it's even uh, it can even cause respiratory irritation as well. And not only that, it's damaging to the building because whatever you've got uh, in the water will eventually become airborne through this uh, through a process of evaporation and it can actually uh, uh, cause corrosion to structural uh, elements of the building and it's responsible for all of the negative things that people tend to associate with chlorine it's actually not free chlorine that's responsible for it it's combined chlorine that's responsible for all of the um, the negative aspects that people tend to associate with swimming pools. It's this combination of ammonia and, and chlorine that produces this combined chlorine that's um, an, an undesirable side effect of the, of the uh, disinfection process. 
there's no tablet test for combined chlorine. Um, there's a DPD test that will DPD one test that will tell you how much free chlorine you have in the pool. But in order to find out how much combined chlorine you've got in the pool, we measure something called uh, total chlorine, which is uh, you know exactly what it sounds like. It's the the free chlorine plus combined chlorine equals the total chlorine, and this is measured with a DPD three tablet. So what you've got is the free chlorine measured with DPD1, total chlorine measured with DPD3. And it's the difference between the two that will tell you what the uh, combined chlorine level is. So for example, if we measured the free chlorine with a DPD1 tablet, and we got a reading of 1.5 for the free chlorine and then we went on to test the total chlorine reading and we got a, uh, a result of 2. Then we'd be able to establish that there is uh, a level of 0.5 of the combined chlorine. So the combined chlorine is the difference. So Free chlorine is the first test with a DPD1. Follow that up with a test on total chlorine with a DPD3. And you'll find that the total chlorine should never be less than the free chlorine because that wouldn't that wouldn't make any sense. The, the, the total chlorine is either going to be the same as the free chlorine, in which case you haven't got any combined chlorine, or usually the total chlorine will be slightly more than the free chlorine and it's the difference between the two that tells you how much combined chlorine you've got. Now you need to keep your combined chlorine levels under control and there's a couple of parameters to be aware of. Your combined chlorine needs to be less than one or if it's lower less than half of the free chlorine level. So in this example, we've got a free chlorine level of 1.5. So half of 1.5 is 0.75. So that's lower. So that would be our objective is to keep the uh, combined chlorine level lower than 0.75 rather than seek to just keep it lower than 1. So for example, if it was... 0.85 the level of combined chlorine was 0.85 that would still be too high but in this example we've got a a, a combined chlorine level of 0.5 so it's lower than half of the free so that would be uh, an acceptable level of combined chlorine so just in summary then uh, you've got bathers that bring in sweat urine etc into the pool which turns into ammonia and then that ammonia ends up mixing with the free chlorine which produces combined chlorine and total chlorine is the total of the free and the combined.